Okay, so hello everyone. Welcome to the Mastering Shiny Book Club. Today I'm going to present the chapter seven, that is the chapter about graphics. So basically, what we're going to learn to do in this chapter is that we're going to take the reactive expressions and everything we learn about the reactive programming, and we're gonna we're gonna put that into making interactive graphics and interactive interacting with the plots that we make to create a, we could say some more maybe some graphics that we can take some more information out of them if we need some specific information that we may need so something like that we can achieve it with these interactive plots that we can make. Uh, can you see my screen well, or do you need me to make Zoom? I think it's fine. From my okay, end. perfect. Thank you. Okay, so basically the learning objectives is how to use render plot, create interactive plots and display images at the end of the chapter with render image. So the basis, the basics, the two libraries that we need to, to do this chapter is basically Shiny and ggplot2. And it says that the Shiny, the syntax for displaying a plot in Shiny is basically in the UI, the user interface, we're gonna select the plot output that we're gonna release the output. And in the server, we're gonna have the render plot, the function that releases the plot to HTML, as we know. Uh, these interactive plots work, works with some actions that the user may uh, do on the, on the plot, on, on our application. Uh, the author mentions these four ones here. Uh, click, just a basic click that we can do on the plot. Uh, double click as well, just a basic double click that we can do on the plot. Hover, it's just like uh, leaving the mouse still for a little while, for a little while on top of maybe a point uh, on the graphic to know what value is it or something like that. In a brush, that is basically our rectangular selection tool. We're gonna show it uh, a little bit later on the chapter. So let's see here. We're gonna do, we're gonna learn, we're gonna remember how to create like a basic plot. Which Maybe I... in that case, you might increase the font. Uh, okay, sure. Let me see here. Global uh, tools, sir. Okay, tools, yeah. global options. Appearance. Appearance. Yeah, then edit a font, edit a font size. Yeah, maybe 16, 18, right? Yeah. Okay, let's do it on 18 just to be sure. Yeah. Perfect. I think that was a little bit too big. Okay, can you see it? Yeah. Perfect. So basically, we're going to remember how we can start a basic plot without any interactive things on the plot. So we're going to create the user interface here with the fluid page, and we're going to start with a plot output. This is we're going to call it plot. And we're gonna select, the, we're gonna choose the parameter click equals to plot click. We're gonna, we're not gonna use that right now, but just to let you know that this is the, this is the parameter that we need to set in order to have the interactivity with the click option. We're gonna have as well a text output, a verbatim text output. And on the server function, we're gonna show a plot. We're gonna select the output as a plot, and we're gonna do a basic plot of the empty cars data set. 
with WT and MPG. So let's see how does that look. Okay, perfect. So we're gonna we're doing here a scatter plot of basically a MPG here on the y-axis and WT here on the x-axis. Basic plot. When I click, it doesn't do anything. If I drag here, it doesn't do anything. We just have that plot as an image. So now we want to now we want to do some basic interactivity that when the user a uh, click somewhere on the phone on the plot it tells the 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 app it tells the user the y axis and the x axis where he is clicking so in order to do that we're not going to change the U ui because we already have we already have here the verbatim options to show this data that we want. And we already have the click parameter for the interactivity. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create the same plot as a server. We don't change the server, uh, this part of the server or the plot. But in here, look at this, we have here the info, the output info. It will be a text, a verbatim text output. So we're gonna tell them then this rec, I have here the documentation. Basically it ensures that values are available before proceeding with a calculation or action. So in our case, I mean, the, I guess that it makes sure that the click is uh, somewhere on the graphic that uh, Shiny will be able to like, or it makes sense to to have that x-axis and y-axis uh, shown. I guess it it makes sure the click is on the inside the graphic. Not totally sure, but I guess that's what it is doing. After that, uh, we're gonna assign a variable to x we're gonna say we're gonna use the input for the plot click and from the x-axis this is a uh, kind of weird <laughs> i haven't seen that anywhere before like with double dollar signs but i guess it's from the input it's accessing the plot click option, the plot click parameter. And from the plot click parameter, it is accessing the X axis, since this is like a list, an object from an object with a list, if I'm not mistaken. So we can do that double selection, double specification here. And we're going to round that number uh, to two decimals. So let's see how that looks. Okay, perfect. So we have here the same plot as before, nothing has changed. But now, if we click anywhere, we're gonna, we're gonna have this output. Uh, I forget to mention this output is here specified with the cat function. That's just how we want to show the output, how we want to show those numbers. So we can see here that we clicked on the 3.79 in the x-axis and 30.15 on the y-axis. So this is a little bit of interactivity on our, on our plot. Let's continue here. So the second action that we can do with our click or the user can do with the click it's the near points option, the near point function. Function. What near points function do, from what I understood, is that it only accepts clicks in precise values from the data set, and it will show all the all the variables values from that point. So in here we have the same user interface. We still use the parameter plot click. And in the server, we have the same plot. But in here, when we have, we're gonna render a table 
oh, we changed here a table. Instead of that verbatim text, we want a table output. So for that render table, we're, what we're gonna render is near point. We're gonna specify, we need to specify the data set that we are using. Uh, we're gonna use the input from plot click. We're gonna, when we also have to specify that we're using the X axis, it's equal to WT and the Y axis is equal to MPG. So near points knows uh, what to expect or what to show, what row, what column or what rows and what column from what column it needs to show. So let's run it here. And if you see here, we have the same plot, but I am clicking right now in this part. It doesn't do anything. Yeah, I'm clicking here near this point. It doesn't do anything. But when I click on this plot and this point in this exact point, it will show here WT, that's for 4.07. And it will show here MPG 16. So this is this point. And as we specified, it will show all the variables values for, uh, for that point. It doesn't, when I click somewhere else, it doesn't do anything. If I click in some other points, it will also show the values for from each point. Okay, so basically now the author tells us that what if we want to see what's happening uh, behind the curtains, we can say from that near points function and as we saw in previous chapter, in chapter five, we can use the browse, the browse function to like debug, debug what we are doing here in order to see what's going on or what values are we getting back from, from that near point, from that near point function. function. So uh, this is the same UI. And basically this is the same application as before, but uh, in here in near points, as you can see, we are not specifying whether the X axis or the Y axis. Uh, that's why that's because we are using ggplot here instead of, instead of the base plot function from R. So when we do, when we specify the output plot, with ggplot, we don't need to specify it here. We don't need to specify those axes here. So it will save us some code. And let's see what happens. Uh, in here, we already, we added the browser function. So let's see what happens. If I run this, this application, and as you can see, the style has changed because we are doing it with uh, ggplot. If I click here, see here that now we have one call, okay. Browse uh, the first call that we have, but it's not doing anything. If I click here in this point or in this point, it doesn't do anything. It, to make it do something to show us what values we're gonna need to call the the function in our in our console. So if we have if we run the function near points with the data set and the input that we have, the click input that we have on our application, let's do it with this one. Let's click here. And if we run it. And if we run it, and if we run it here, let's see. Oh, okay. <laughs> Since I clicked the first time uh, in a in an empty space, it didn't show anything. But let's try it one more time here. Yeah. Mm. Uh, let's stop the debug. Let's run it again. So. 
This time I'm gonna click here on this point and let's see what shows us. It will show us the values that will get shown to the user if we run this application. So in case, maybe if you want to debug your application, if you want to see what's uh, returning to the user, you can use that function. You can use that browser function. Now the next, the next action that the user can take, it is the brush action. This is basically just doing like a rectangle or a rectangle with the click, with the mouse. So let's see here, instead of doing here the plot, we're gonna select instead the parameter click, we're gonna use brush, and we're gonna select the blood brush option. We're gonna select it as that. We also gonna display a, ta a table. And in here, we have, as you can see, we have the same output for the plot, the same ggplot uh, graphic plot, but instead here, uh, instead here, what we're gonna do on the table, what we're gonna show, we're gonna call this option with this function, brush points. We're gonna give them the data set and we're gonna give them the input as a plot brush, as the plot brush that we specified here. So let's run this one and let's see what happens. Okay, so basically I have here the, the same one, the same plot with ggplot. If I click, it doesn't show anything because we don't we didn't specify the click parameter here. Uh, but now if I brush here, it's gonna show us the values from those points. It's gonna render the table. It's gonna do it automatically. It will update automatically. And we can select all those points that we need, all the points that we need. So let's here. Okay, perfect. Let That's me interesting. <clears throat> yes, it's really interesting all <laughs> these kind of things that you can do with those applications. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Okay. I don't know if you can do it like uh, just in your say, uh, just in R with Plotly. It is kind of similar, but... Uh, I think Plotly also allows uh, dragging in some regions of the plot. Yes. But I think it helps to zoom. I don't know whether it can extract the data and throw it somewhere in the console. <laughs> oh, no, I just, the, just like the zoom and yeah. the rushing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so let's see here. This is the brushing part. We already. Okay, so now we're gonna modify, we're gonna start to modify the blood. So basically in here, we have two different functions. We have the reactive functions that we already know from previous chapters, but we have this one, this new one here, the reactive bulb function. Uh, the author says that we're gonna dig more into that on, on some next chapters. But basically this function is that the difference between those two functions is that the reactive valve function, it updates the values automatically. Uh, so let's see an example here. So if we have here, if we set it as this and let's we run it as this, let's run it here. Oh, but it's outside of a reactive environment, yes. But basically it should return a 10, as we can see here. If we run it in a reactive environment, it should mm -hmm. return a 10. Yeah. And the basic difference is that we can we can update it. 
So if we run, for example, val, and we want a 20, we specify the 20 here, and it will update automatically. Yeah, if we want to update it, that in one, we just have to call it like this, and it will update. That's the basic difference with uh, this bulb, this reactive, and these reactive bulb functions. Let's see here. So in this case, in order to show like this functionality and why we will want to learn this part of the reactive bulb, we're gonna create a data frame here. And we're, we're, what we're gonna do is that we're gonna, <clears throat> sorry about that, that we're gonna create the UI with the click, with the click uh, interactivity. And from the server, what we're gonna do is, we're gonna create a variable here that is called dist. First, we're gonna assign uh, just once, uh, just one value, repeat it from the number of rows on the data frame. And what we're gonna do is that we're gonna call this function observe event. We're gonna specify that we want the input from the plot click, wherever the user clicks. And we work, what we're gonna do in this case is we're gonna calculate the distance between in the near points on the data frame on the between the data frame and the input plot click. And we're gonna save those distance. Uh, after that, we're gonna we're gonna like join those distance that we have saved here. We call it as this because remember there is a reactive function. And we're gonna create another column, as we can say, from our data frame. Uh, and what we're gonna do is that we're gonna create a plot with ggplot, basically saying that the size of those of the points, it will be equal to the distance that we calculated before. Uh, take into account that all those distance are calculated automatically with each click. And this is like kind of the idea of these reactive e bulb function that it automatically updates. And from this reactive kind of programming, this is like the functionality that we can get. So let's run this function. Let's see what happens. Okay, so basically we have the whole points here. We have the scatter plot, but if we click here, Okay, it will vary, the size will vary from the ones closer to the click, they will be smaller. And the ones uh, further away from the click, they will be larger than the other ones. And this function, as we specified, it will calculate automatically each time we do a click. It will update automatically, so the I guess this is pretty useful. This is pretty interesting how we can do that. Yeah. I, I don't really think there is like another option to do it in R apart from shining. I don't know how you, maybe you could do that only with R without shiny, if it's possible, I'm not sure. Yeah, not sure either. <laughs> So that's pretty cool that we can do that on our applications. Exactly. Uh, so, and the author tells us that it gives us another example with different colors where we initialize the reactive val instead of just a vector with ones, we specify a vector of falses. And we use brush points in the bar to add any points under the brush to the selection. Let's see how, how how we can do it in here. Uh, in here, we are also adding another action, we could say. We are actually the double click action. 
And what the double click will do is that it will reset the plot. If we want to reset the plot to the initial form, we just have to double click on that plot. Uh, the brush parameter, we just specified as plot, as plot brush as before. And we're gonna create here. So basically, well, I was telling before, we're gonna create this falses vector here. And we're, what we're gonna do is that we're gonna use this observe event function with the input from, from the plot brush. And we're gonna select the colors here. Basically here we have the colors. The color will be equal to the selection. This is a new column here in the empty car data set. That is basically this reactive function that we created here. And let's see what it does. Okay, so basically we have the selection. We have all values that start from false since we created that vector here. And every time we brush a point, that value will change to true and it will automatically update on our function and it will change the color from the, from the plot. And basically, if we do it again, it, it won't do anything else. But if we select other points, it will start to change colors as well without, without erasing the previous ones. So we, it will update automatically everything here, every point that we want. And if we want to reset the plot uh, to the initial state, we just have to do a double click here and the plot is back to original form. Nice. Yes, very nice. <laughs> okay, this, we already saw that. Uh, so here for the interactivity limitations, basically the author uh, told, tells us that this is the basic form of a plot on, or an interactive plot on, on these shiny applications. So basically JavaScript captures the mouse, the mouse event. Then shiny sends the mouse event data back to R. The reactive actions are recomputed with our functions. And the plot output is sent to an, an image of the result to the browser. The author also tells us that this can be a little uh, like troublesome with large data sets, with very large data sets that we could have. So uh, uh, what is thought to be instantaneous, it will depend on a lot of things, not just R or Shiny, but also like some, where the app is uploaded, everything, every, like the sum of all those parts. And it is a little bit, it can be a little bit, uh, like, how can I say, like, it can take some time depending of the size of the uh, data sets that we are handling. So it, most of the times, it won't be automatic or it won't be instantaneous. And the author also says that in order to uh, just like to do this a little bit better or in less time, we can use the Plotly package. That is the package that we were mentioning before that it does, it has like all these interactive uh, actions included. So here we have a book. Here we have a book with, well, uh, from Plotly, where we can see all those plots and everything that Plotly can do with Shiny, of course. 
So basically, if you want to get like better times, better, uh, or yes, better times, it will be better to use Plotly from your Shiny applications. Okay, so in here, we have dynamic height and width. So if we want to change the plot interactively, we can do it with these functions. So basically here we have a user interface that we're gonna select a slider input. We're gonna name it height. And here we have the values, the same as width. And we have a plot output with the width and the height specified. Let's see here. Now for the server, well, what it will do is that we're gonna create a plot with the width. It is very important that we create a function with no parameters, nothing, that the, the only thing that the function must do is to return this, the width and another, another with the height. This is the important part to take notice if you want to update all those values from your plots. And let's see what happened here if we create this app. Okay, so basically here we created the plot with a width of 250 and a height of 250. If we want to change that, we can use the slider input that we change here with the width. Let's send it to 500 and we can do this and do this. Oh, to small there. And basically we can change with this, with these options, we can change like interactively uh, the height and the width from, an, uh, from a plot as we want. The, th the important thing to remember is that we we need to have this function without parameters and that it returns those values in order to have like that, like those values automatically added to the plot. And last part, last part of this chapter, it's how to render images or how to display images using the render image function. Here we have the app. So basically we can select from three, from three images. Uh, what we do is that we create a table or sorry, that we create a variable from puppies uh, from here. And what we're gonna do is that we're gonna use the select input function that we saw in another chapters. We already, we are gonna add this HTML output with the source and an image output with the photo. The HTML output is just uh, It's just the well, like the link where you can where you can find the original source, and the image output is where what we're gonna where we're gonna receive the photo, the image, and basically here we have the output. We're gonna create the photo, and we're gonna use the function render image. That's the new part that we didn't know. Here we have to have a list with a file path. Yeah, the content type, it's, you will need to specify, I guess, what type of image and what type of format it is. And if you don't want to delete your file, equals to false. And the source output is gonna render UI. So basically what we're gonna do is that we're gonna have the puppies, the puppy ID, it's gonna be equal to the input ID. 
and the HTML. Well, it follows the uh, HTML kind of format to specify the link. And if we run all of that application, it will give us this one, this application where we can select. We can see the image here and we can have the original source and the original link here as the source that we had here. More info on these images. It could be found, it could be found here on the render image in a shiny app part of the shiny website. Here you can see all the information that you need in order to show an image on your application. Okay, and just to close the presentation, some resources, the image that we already saw, the image website on the Shiny application and the Shiny chat sheet that it is deleted. We have to we have to like renew that link. I don't know where can I where can we find it? I haven't looked for it. I don't know, but if you click the the other, yeah, that one, the go to shiny home, it, it could take okay. you somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yes, but it it's like the main page. Yeah, it takes you to the main page, yeah. <laughs> In here I had like the gallery for here we have an example of what we can do with all these reactive expressions and all these graphics that we have. So basically we have we can choose the data set. We can choose which plot to use if we want mm -hmm. base or ggplot2. We can change the scale of the scale of the variables if we maybe mm -hmm. want to do normalize them or something like that. Mm -hmm. We can change the face it. And all of this, we can do it like with these graphic settings and with these reactive functions that we already saw. So this is like really interesting. It It's yeah. kind of, it, here we have the code. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of lengthy. I guess here it is showing us all the options with maybe the, okay, no. Yes, it's showing us here some custom CSS like to style the UI. Mm -hmm. But as you can see, it is very lengthy, but it is very interesting all that we can do with these shiny applications and with these reactive functions and with these graphics. In this case. You could drop that in the chat. Oh, sure. Yeah. Sure thing. Here you go. Thanks. Sure. Okay, and that will be all for this chapter seven from graphics. So let me know if any of you have any questions, any comments. Okay, so in this case, if no one has any questions, I think we're good to go. Yeah, I think it's super interesting. And yeah, just the next thing is to put it into action in our <laughs> as much yes, as that, possible. <laughs> that's, that's a cool part, put it in yeah. action with, with our own work. <laughs>